higher. So this is a second set of examples for the second lesson uh, on the graphs and transformations booklet. Well, I quite like this. This 2 here, it's multiplying everything by 2. So it's a stretch, scale factor 2, parallel to the y-axis. Some people say it's a scale factor 2 in the y-direction. It's doubling all the y-values. Now, if your y-value is 0 where it crosses the x-axis, if you double 0, it's nothing. So it's fixed at the um, on the on the x-axis. So before it crossed at minus two and zero, so it's still going to cross at minus two and zero. It would just be two times the y-value. So you could argue twice as steep there. So that's still crossing at minus two, and that's still crossing at zero. The vertex was minus one minus one. So now the vertex is minus one minus 2 there. In terms of the graph, I'm doubling the equation, which was x add 1 squared minus 1 there. I can expand that two lots of x add 1 squared minus 2 and that fits as well with the completing the square because your vertex is minus 1, minus 2. Right, let's have a look at this one then. So this one is multiplying all the y values by a half. So it's a stretch, scale factor, a half parallel to the y axis. So this is half as big, but then, so it's still fixed at the x axis, the minus 2 and 0, but it's going to be half as far, but if you zoomed in on your graph, it still looks the same, to be honest. So that's still a minus 2, that's still a 0. Instead of a vertex of minus 1, minus 1, because it's half as far away from the x-axis, it's minus 1, minus a half. For the equation of the curve, it's now a half lots of x add 1 squared minus 1. So it'd be y equals a half x add 1 squared minus a half. And that fits as well with your vertex. So that's quite nice. All right then, let's keep going. Okay. When the x were doing the translations, it was a wrong way round. It looked like it went left, but it went right. And it's a similar vein with this. And it comes from the rearranging when you get it equal to zero. Now that f of 2x means I'm squishing twice as much graph into the same area. So what it means is, where I would, would have plotted something at x is 4, I'm now plotting it at x is 2. So I'm halving the x value of where I, where I plot it. And because of that idea, it's a stretch scale factor, a half. It's always 1 over that number. Look, see, 1 over that number. And that's parallel to the x-axis this time. So the last two were on the y-axis, this is on the x-axis. Now when it was on the y-axis, it was fixed on the x-axis. And you were stretching it out like a catapult. This time, you're kind of squeezing it into the y-axis. And it's fixed at the y-axis. So if it's half as far before... Its vertices, uh, so its roots were at minus 2 and 0, and that was minus 1, minus 1. If that's now squished in half as far, still got the same shape of graph, but this time that's going to be minus 1. It's going to be fixed at the y axis. My vertex is squished in half as far, so that's going to be minus a half minus 1. It's still it's pushed in, it's still as, as far down on the minus 1. But the points are a half as much in. Right then. For this, I'm replacing x with 2x. So my equation becomes, so it was x, x add 1 squared minus 1. So I'm replacing the x with a 2x. So it becomes a 2x. 
add 1 squared minus 1. There you go, that's what it looks like. Right then, let's have a look at the next one. Okay, so this is a third, so it's upside down, so it's a stretch, scale factor 3 parallel to the x-axis. There. So, this time, I've only got a third as much graph in the area. So what I would have had at, at x is 1 is now graphed at x is 3. It's kind of stretched out. I imagine it like an accordion where you're kind of squishing into where the y-axis is. Right, so, let's have a look. Uh, it's fixed through the zero, but instead of it being minus 2, it's now minus 6. The vertex, instead of it being minus 1, it's now minus 3. There. In terms of the equation, it's a y equals a third x add 1 squared minus 1. All right, I've got time to do the next two. Good. There. All right. A reflection in the x-axis. So all I'm doing is changing the sign on the y values. That's all I'm doing. So my vertex was minus 1, 1. So it's upside down now. Oops, I can never draw upside down curves. I have to turn my paper upside down, really. There. So instead of that vertex being minus 1, minus 1, it's now minus 1, plus 1. And all I'm doing to the equation is a big minus in front of it. So that was x add 1 squared minus 1. Oops. So it's y equals minus x add 1 squared plus 1. And once again, that matches on you comp uh, completing the square. So that's OK. So that's a reflection in the x-axis. Right. A reflection in the y-axis says instead of plotting at x is 4, you plot the y value at x is minus 4. So it reflects it in the y-axis. But what I'm doing is I'm replacing the x with a minus x. So the graph was, or did have roots at minus 2 and 0. So if that's flipped over, it has roots at 0 and 2. The vertex was minus 1, minus 1. So now it's 1, minus 1. For the equation, I'm replacing the x with a minus x. So the equation becomes and most people would rewrite that in a bracket as 1 minus x squared minus 1. Right. Time's running out on this bit. Then we have the main examples done up to page 6. Uh, there's some to practice. Let's keep moving on past that. Oh, answers as well. Right, so do you think you could fill this in for me? Oh, actually, that's the start of lesson three, so don't fill that in. Bye-bye. <laughs>